When you've got a franchise as big as Star Wars, there's bound to be fan fiction. But there's fan fiction, and then there's fan fiction. Ewan McGregor reacts to homoerotic Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin fan art. How do you think he feels about it? You'll find out in this video. Stick around until the end to get all caught up in all you need to know about Star Wars. First, filming has started for Skeleton Crew. Since Lucasfilms has gained momentum with the help of Disney+, Plus, they're not showing any signs of slowing down anytime soon. Just in the last few years alone, we've been treated with The Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then there are a lot of new projects in the works, some more mysterious than others. One that is absolutely on the more mysterious side is the newly announced Skeleton Crew, starring Jude Law. Skeleton is said to follow a group of kids of about 10 years old, who get lost in the Star Wars universe, but nothing more is known about the plot. Just that Skeleton Crew is supposed to have a similar feel as the animated The Clone Wars series, which took a look at the ground-level action away from the Jedi. Jedi Order. But there's a good chance that we'll soon learn much more about this highly anticipated post-episode 6 adventure. Filming has officially started at Manhattan Beach Studios, the same location that was used for Obi-Wan Kenobi, The Book of Boba Fett, and The Mandalorian. This tells us that we can at least expect some consistency in the level of production as everything that came with the other projects that went through Manhattan Beach Studios. More shoots will take place in Culver City, California, and at California State University, Dominguez Hills. Following Ewan McGregor reacts to homoerotic Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin fan art. It took 17 whole years, but Star Wars fans eventually got to see Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen on the same big screen together again. They first appeared as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker in Episode 2 and Episode 3 of the prequel trilogy back in the early and mid-2000s, which leaves a lot of time for fans to proclaim their love for the franchise in whatever way they see fit. And it's a well-known fact that a lot of fans find their creative side in creating fan art for their most loved shows. Speaking with GQ magazine, Ewan McGregor touched upon some of the fan art he's seen through the years, depicting his Obi-Wan Kenobi and Hayden Christensen's Anakin Skywalker. And he didn't shy away from sharing an NSFW response regarding the homoerotic creations. He was reminded of something rather specific when the interviewer suggested a disco-style Obi-Wan action figure, which prompted the actor to say, yeah, in leather flares and nothing else. You open the envelope, you think you're going to have to sign something, and you're like, effing hell. We can understand it might be quite the revelation to be treated with that specific kind of fan art. Pretty much everything that has a fan base will have its fair share of NSFW fan art. So McGregor is probably not the only one who was treated on those leather flares either. And now Taika Waititi forgot Natalie Portman was in Star Wars prequel movies. We have to give it to Taika Waititi that he does have a lot on his plate. He was still the writer and director and was working on the latest Marvel movie, Thor, Love and Thunder, when he was hired to make his very own Star Wars movie, which has yet to be named but is currently in production. But it seems like he was so wrapped up in his workload that he forgot he was already working with one of the most prominent Star Wars actors of all time, Natalie Portman. YTT was talking about what it was like to work with Natalie Portman with Rolling Stone when he recalled an unfortunate conversation he'd had with Portman while working on Thor, Love and Thunder with her. According to the director, Portman had asked him what he was up to next, to which Waititi had replied, I'm trying to work on a Star Wars thing. Have you ever wanted to be in a Star Wars movie? Now it's been nearly 20 years since Portman was in a Star Wars movie, but how could someone like Waititi forget that Portman portrayed the mother of Luke and Leia and the love interest of Darth Vader? She wasn't exactly an extra, but in the end, Waititi is only human, and he just blanked out for a second. And to be fair, it took a while for the prequel trilogy to become as iconic as it is today. Next up, how does the Star Wars composer feel about another season of Obi-Wan Kenobi? Did Disney release unedited Star Wars footage? And is Christian Bale finally joining Star Wars? Keep watching to find out more. Star Wars composer isn't so sure about Obi-Wan Kenobi season 2. Disney Plus's Obi-Wan Kenobi has left fans with a tease for more episodes of the limited series. Even though the show wrapped up in a satisfying manner, there are many elements about Obi-Wan Kenobi that leave fans wondering if it's really necessary to leave it at a six-episode run only. For one, why give us Liam Neeson's return as Ki-Gon Jinn in the form of a Force Ghost, which has only increased our desire for another season, when there's not going to be another season? There's still nine years left to explore in the Star Wars timeline until we're caught up to the events of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. If only the team wished to do so. Natalie Holt, the Star Wars composer, spoke with Star Wars Newsnet about her work on the Star Wars series, and was faced with the question whether or not she would return for a second season. 
She responded with a non-committal, I don't know, and reaffirmed that Deborah Chow has told her that Obi-Wan Kenobi is very much a completed story. But on the other hand, Ewan McGregor is pretty much in love with Obi-Wan and would love to portray him once more, a sentiment that is shared with his co-star Hayden Christensen. So maybe we shouldn't give up hope for a second season of Obi-Wan Kenobi just yet. Disney released the first unedited Star Wars footage with the release of a new trailer for Light and Magic. For the first time ever, Disney has revealed a tiny glimpse of original unedited Star Wars footage with the release of a new trailer for the upcoming documentary Light and Magic. The documentary is a celebration of ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, the VFX house that Lucasfilms founded by George Lucas in 1975, specifically to make Star Wars. So it makes sense that some unaltered original Star Wars footage would be pulled out of the vaults to put on display. Disney Plus has been the home for all things Star Wars for a little while now. And back when Disney acquired Lucasfilm and Star Wars, the fan base was sort of expecting that the non-special edition version of the original trilogy films would be released. But that moment never came. And stories began to circulate about how it's impossible for anyone to release clean, high-definition versions of the original unaltered Star Wars trilogy because the negatives have in fact been destroyed long ago. It's generally known that Lucasfilm's endeavored to erase the unaltered originals from existence, not just by not distributing their altered version, but made the originals commercially absolutely unavailable. Disney has every reason to finally release the footage that has been on the wish list of diehard Star Wars fans for years, but the fact that they haven't done so yet seems to suggest the worst. Does this glimpse give new hope that not all has been lost? What do you think? Is Christian Bale joining Star Wars? Christian Bale has managed to maintain a delicate balance between critical appeal and pop blockbuster films for decades now, and is undeniably one of the most iconic actors of all time. But there is one franchise that he has missed out on so far. Bale has made no secret of the fact that he's a fan of Star Wars, and is even said to have been one of George Lucas's top choices to play Anakin Skywalker. We all know he lost that one to Hayden Christensen. Then it's said that Bale was up for the part of Alden Ehrenreich's Han Solo in Solo, A Star Wars Story, which would eventually go to Woody Harrelson. Could it be that the third time is a charm? Because according to Giant Freakin' Robot, Christian Bale has been tapped again. This time it seems like Bale is in touch to play the protagonist Starkiller. Starkiller is not a name that will be known to the casual Star Wars fan, but he's been a fan favorite since he was introduced in the popular video game, The Force Unleashed, and its sequel, The Force Unleashed 2. Starkiller has a storyline that is arguably one of the darker ones, and he's definitely one of the more morally ambiguous characters to be introduced in the now non-canon Star Wars Legends continuity. Is Lucasfilms really starting to draw inspiration from the video games? We'll have to wait and see, but we would be very excited if they are. And that's a wrap for now. Would you like Christian Bale to join Star Wars? Let us know in the comments what you think. And thanks for watching.